All right, so let's try this one out. Example 16.11, the effect of pH on solubility. So we're going to determine whether each compound is more or less soluble in acidic conditions. So what would be present in acidic conditions? H plus or H3O plus, either one. Let's think about just H plus. All right. So let's think about how the H plus ions or the hydronium would affect these equilibria. All right, so let's do uh, A first, shall we? That's usually how we go. We usually A, then B, then C. All right, so here's our equilibrium for the solubility. BAF2 solid is in equilibrium with barium 2 plus aqueous plus fluoride aqueous. And before I get yelled at, I will balance the chemical equation. Put a 2 in front of that fluoride. Now those of you who had to put up with me in general chemistry one, uh, this will be, uh, you've heard this before. All right, so that's it. But there are plenty of people who did not have to put up with me in uh, Gen Chem one who need to know this information. All right, are you ready? So if you didn't have to put up with me in Gen Chem one. Right. Those of you who had to put up with me in Gen Chem one, you probably forgot about this too. Or you weren't listening. Okay. But, okay, so it's a joke. Okay, it's a very important joke that every chemistry student needs to know. All right? So I just want to make sure you know it. All right? I can see everybody's so intrigued. All right? I am stomped. It's building up suspense. All right, what do you do with a dead chemist? I, I literally, oh my god. Okay. You, you knew it was coming? <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew that was coming. All right, so what do you do with a dead chemist? Anybody remember from Gen Chem 1? You bury them. You bury them. All right. All right, so now that we know that, everybody in the room knows that one. That's good. What do you do? <coughs> All right, so. Now what we're doing with this equilibrium uh, system is we're thinking about will this H plus affect the equilibrium? All right, and it's usually going to be on the ion side. So would H plus react in any way with barium? No, not really. They're both cations. They're probably not going to be too in, uh, involved with each other. What about fluoride? Yes. Fluoride is the conjugate base of HF, right? So it will accept some protons. So yeah, H, or that fluoride will accept those H plus ions in solution or a proton alpha hydronium and set up equilibrium with its conjugate acid, HF. So if fluoride is accepting some protons What's going to happen to the concentration of fluoride? It's going to decrease. It's a reactant in this reaction, right? So it's accepting protons, making HF, so fluoride concentration is going to go down. Which way is that going to shift the equilibrium? To the right. So yep, it's going to shift the equilibrium to the right. Now, we're asking about the solubility. Is the solubility increased or decreased if we're shifting to the right? Increased. Increase. We're making more ions. More barium fluoride solid, crystal, is coming into solution. So your solubility is higher. It's increased in acidic conditions. For this one, the fluoride? So the fluoride concentration would go down because it's accepting protons and making HF. So that's like the first thing that triggers the shift in equilibrium. Professor, the, the, um, 
probability goes up because the stars and the yeah, it's more of the barium fluoride is dissolving, okay, and that's what the solubility is. We would say the solubility goes up. The more the more something dissolves, the higher the solubility. So, yep, that's a good way to think about it. All right, B, I'm actually going to change uh, just a little bit. It will give us the same answer, but this one is a little bit more on our wavelength. Uh, so let's change it to, instead of silver iodide, let's pretend we're talking about silver chloride. We've been talking about silver chloride, so let's just change it. Again, it would be the same logical conclusion with silver iodide, but we know uh, silver chloride just a little bit better. So we get silver chloride. In equilibrium with its, with its dissociated ions. That's a big minus. Whew. Let's calm down. A little bit more. But a little. All right. Well, let's, let's step back. Let's just think about this. Okay. So now, again, we got H plus ions in solution. We're in acidic conditions. So let's think about if it's going to react with either of these ions. Is H plus going to react with silver plus one in any way? No, no probably not. What about chloride? Could it react with H or chloride? Mm -hmm. And make HCl? Okay, you don't want it to be equilibrium? Okay. No, I'm just saying does the HCl bring completely to the HCl? Yeah, HCl, yeah, HCl breaks completely, ionizes completely, right? So it can't do this? I don't think so. No, I think you're right. Nope, this ain't going to happen. H plus is not going to bind with, uh, form a bond with chloride because chloride is the conjugate base of HCl, which we know is a strong acid, right? 100% ionization, no coming back. This would be the reverse reaction, H plus and Cl minus producing HCl. So nope, this ain't going to happen because HCl is a strong acid. All right? So if H plus doesn't react with chloride, what happens to the concentration of chloride? Nothing. It doesn't change. So if chloride's concentration doesn't change, what happens to the equilibrium? Stays Nothing. The it stays the same. So it's not. The solubility doesn't change in acidic conditions because HCl is a strong acid. Now, the same, would, uh, the same answer would have been applied for this. Turns out hydroiodic HI Hi. is also a strong acid. And so the same answer would have happened. It's not going to, okay. uh, silver iodide wouldn't be any more soluble. But just we know HCl is a strong acid. That's one of the ones we're working with a lot. Because the HI is part of those big strong. Yeah, HI is a strong acid. Uh, all of the halogens or the halic acids are strong except for HF. That's the only weak one because it has the really good uh, orbital, orbital overlap, makes a stronger bond. Not in aqueous solution, I'll say that. You can make HCl, but in the gas phase, as soon as you put it in water, it breaks up. Yep. It makes hydrochloric acid. As soon as that H plus finds somewhere else to go, it goes. Yep, it goes to water. <coughs> All right, let's try out C, shall we? All right, calcium hydroxide. So we know it as a strong base, which we normally assume is 100% uh, uh, ionization, but it does have a limited solubility. So if you put too much calcium hydroxide, you'll have solid at the bottom pretty fast, like 0.1 molar. That's about all it's soluble-ish. All right, so let's say it's a saturated solution of calcium hydroxide. So we've got solid at the bottom of the beaker. It would set up equilibrium with the dissociated ions, calcium, and two hydroxides before I get yelled at. I'll keep it a balanced K. 
chemical equation. So, yep, so we got H plus in solution. What will H plus react with, if anything, in this equilibrium? OH. OH, yeah, it's going to react with hydroxide. And make water, H2O, good. All right, so if the H plus is essentially neutralized by the hydroxide, what's happening to the concentration of the hydroxide? Decreases. Decreases, yep, good. Going down, going down. Hydroxide is going down. Which way is that going to shift? To the equilibrium. Right. To the right. So if we're shifting to the right, making more ions, would we say that solubility is increased or decreased? Increased. increased. Mm -hmm. So most of the time when it shifts right, the solubility I would say all of the time. If it's shifting to the right, making more ions, we say that solubility increases. That's a good catch. Okay. 